Hi, this is Janet Swanson. I am here today to encourage you, inspire you, and cheer you on, and to let you know you deserve to be happy, to be healed, and to live your life in freedom, free from the pain of your past, free from fear, free from all those voices that tell you, I can't. So let's break the silence and expose the darkness that has held you in confinement way too long. Your life matters. Your story matters. Your voice matters. I believe in you. And most of all, God believes in you. Welcome to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. Welcome back. This is episode three with Prophet Kevin Williams from the Encounter Church right here in Statesboro, Georgia. How you doing, Kevin? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Welcome Excited back. Yeah, this is episode three. We've already had two episodes. In our first episode, Kevin told us his story on how the abuse began and how it affected his identity. So if you haven't listened to episode one, I want to encourage you to go back because Episode two and three is building off episode one. And then in episode two, he told us about how um, his salvation led to deliverance um, from a mentality of abuse and that set him free from the pain of his past and from the residue and all kind of things, leaving that old lifestyle and embracing a new lifestyle. So today we're here for episode three. And the name of this episode is called Victimized But Not a Victim. And um, I want to talk for a minute, um, Kevin, about the word abuse, because a lot of people are being abused and they don't even know they're being abused because it's just their lifestyle and it's what they've always dealt with. And, and then therefore, if they, if they were abused in their childhood, they carry it into their present and into their future and they look for those symptoms and they fall back in to everything that they really want to get out of. So that word abuse, I looked it up in the dictionary, (laughs) and it means to use wrongly or improperly or misuse, to treat in a harmful way, injurious or an offensive way, to speak insultingly, harshly or unjustly to, or um, to talk about, to revile or malign. And, And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to bring recognition to abuse, childhood abuse. And in this case, um, my whole platform is about sexual abuse because I was a victim, but the Lord brought me out of it and he healed me. And there's, there's several kinds of abuse. There's, um, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, work abuse. I mean, people, we we live in a wicked world, don't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is wicked out there. And the enemy is searching for people that he can use so that he can misuse them. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to him if you're in the church, out of the church, black or white, Hispanic, Japanese, Chinese, rich, poor, middle class. He doesn't care. He is seeking whom he may devour. But we were just talking a little bit before the podcast began about how we can destroy the plans of the enemy is just by having another thought, Hmm. you know, taking every thought into captivity and making it come into alignment with God's word and what God says about me. Because the word says that I am who God says that I am. And I am inside of Christ Jesus. So everything that Jesus is, is in me and lives inside of me, but it's our soul, like you were telling us in yeah. episode one, our soul carries so much pain and so many wounds. So um, today we just welcome you. We thank God for you. And the first question I have for you today, we're going to be talking about how deliverance leads to identity and knowing your identity leads to destiny. And now you are really walking strong in your destiny and the plans that God has for you. So um, first, I want to ask you, what does it mean to to know who you are in Christ? What does that really mean, and, and how powerful can that really be? Yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's a very, it's a good question. And I think a lot of Christians have that same, that same question, you know, um, uh, who am I in Christ? You know, and we hear... Ten sermons, five point sermons on on that subject, 
mm-hmm. when uh, knowing who you are in Christ has everything to do about your creation. Mm-hmm. What what your original purpose and what the original intent for you as a person mm-hmm. God had when He thought of you. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and I love what the Lord said to Jeremiah. He said, "Before you were in their mother's womb, I knew you. Mm-hmm. I yada you." You know, I had this intimate connection with you, this thought life with you, this relationship with you, that when I created you and placed you in the womb, Mm -hmm. I created you with purpose and intent. You know, who you are in Christ has everything to do with an identity. Your identity is your DNA, your purpose, Mm -hmm. your, uh, the original intent that God had for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, um, you know, uh, it just, just, if we can just give the basics to it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I will have to go there, you know, mm-hmm. what, uh, who you are in Christ, it speaks of an identity. What is that purpose? Mm-hmm. What is that thing that God created you to do here on this earth? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we find the keys to that, you know, in the word, the word of God. That's right. And most yeah. people, their identity is in what happened to them. Exactly. You know, so if something bad happened to them or the way they've always been treated or mistreated, yeah that becomes their identity and it's all set in our soul and our mind and the way that we think. Yeah. So knowing who you are means that you have to wash your mind with yeah. the word of God and you have to exchange thoughts on a daily basis yeah. because we still live in a broken world and we all have the potential to have a bad thought yeah. or a thought that did not come from heaven. Yeah. You know, so, you know, Jesus said this, pray, let thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So God has a will over your life. He has a story, has a destiny for you. And for you to follow the destiny that he has for you, you have to know who you are. Yeah. And just because you were abused doesn't mean that's who you are. Yeah, it, it really makes me think of, you know, we think about the salvation experience, you know, uh, you were born again. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about the the man that came to Jesus and he said, must I go back into my mother's womb again? Mm-hmm. You know, what does it mean to be born again? And mm-hmm. Jesus replies to him, you must be born from above. Mm-hmm. You know, it means it doesn't matter what your old life looked like. You can be born again. Mm-hmm. You can be born and in, in, in the word says you're, you're uh, a new creation. Yeah. The word new creation, that Greek word that's used there, it means you were never before seen here. So there's a transformation that happens. Yeah. So there's hope and I want to set some people free right now. It doesn't matter what your abuses were. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you're used to. When you are born from above, God does a redemptive work, a transformative work. Mm -hmm. So now there is a new life you can now obtain. There was Mm -hmm. no way you can get it before. Mm -hmm. It's only through Christ that you can get it, that Mm -hmm. you can have a revelation. Your eyes will be open to something new. Your desires will be different. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, that's that's just what it makes me think of, you know, when we're talking about this new identity. You know, you need to first believe that now you can achieve it. You need to now believe that there is something different for you. Mm -hmm. And now you have the ability because why? Mm -hmm. You're a new creation. So you can't, you can't, if, if you're going to hear anything from what we're going to say now Mm -hmm. you have to know if you are a christian Mm -hmm. that you've been born again something has changed inside of you so it's outside doesn't matter Mm -hmm. anymore it's all about the inside that's right inside of you there's a there's a element there that is brand new transformed that's right so although you may have some gunk and stuff in there hey we'll get the gunk out but what i'm talking to you about right now Mm -hmm. is there's an element that's brand new and that brand new thing is Mm -hmm. supernatural the supernatural will always override it will yeah. always supersede. It will always conquer mm-hmm. the natural. The word says uh, the carnal man has nothing to teach the spiritual mm-hmm. man. Understand that that new thing inside of you is powerful. Mm-hmm. It's powerful what you just said, too. We're mm-hmm. being transformed. And um, I just spoke a message this weekend on that word in particular. Mm-hmm. And I, I looked up the word, and it means metamorphosis, to be wow. a complete change. And I think of the caterpillar. Yeah. You know, the caterpillar has the potential of a butterfly, but Mm -hmm. it has to go through a process, right? Oh, yeah. And while it's in that process, it's completely changing. Yeah. But even before it was there in that process, it had the potential to become a butterfly. And I think that's the way we are as Christians. We all have this... um, potential to reach our destiny to the highest of the heights that the Lord has for us. But we got to crawl into God's cocoon. We got to let him transform our mind every day and come out and get rid of that caterpillar mentality. It's just true. It's true. You get rid of that and you exchange it and you become something beautiful. You know, when I, when I think of my, my life and how God has taken me through this thing, you know, from, from uh, a life of, 
uh, darkness and mm-hmm. bondage, mm-hmm. you know, uh, to being born again. Mm-hmm. And then there were certain things that happened to me as a Christian where God began to push me into destiny. Mm-hmm. And there's certain keys that really stick out to me. You know, I, I don't want to get quite into the words just yet, mm-hmm. but I want to start maybe if I can just share a little bit of, yes, of how this thing really began to work with me. Mm-hmm. How did I really discover who I was? Mm-hmm. You know, um, one thing I want to I want to point out is that we know through science mm-hmm. that when you uh, want to figure out who a baby belongs to, you mm-hmm. check the you check the blood yeah. and then you check the blood of the father. Yeah. That's how you can identify. Yeah. So we know through our science that it's fathers who give DNA. Yeah. DNA. Mm-hmm. Meaning the DNA of the family is based on the father. Mm-hmm. That's how you that's how you locate a kid. Mm-hmm. So uh, listen, we know that through science, but mm-hmm. how much more biblically when when uh, Paul says, though you have ten thousand instructors, mm-hmm. yet you have very few fathers. Mm-hmm. But I have begotten you in the gospel. Mm-hmm. Meaning there's a birthing process for every Christian. Yeah. For me, this revelation was uh, uh, what do you call it? Paramount mm-hmm. for the transformation that took took in my life. Mm-hmm. Knowing who I was, I had to have be connected, and uh, I'll call it the law of association. Mm-hmm. Who who I became associated with mm-hmm. did everything for me. Right. I got connected to individuals and an individual who had a fathering spirit. Mm-hmm. He carried God's fathering heart, mm-hmm. and through that fathering heart, I uh, my character was shaped. Mm-hmm. They began to sharpen me, mm-hmm. teach me, coach me. Uh, they began to put what we call the engrafted word, the mm-hmm. implanted word. It is mm-hmm. a word sown through teaching and instruction mm-hmm. into my heart mm-hmm. my, by association. Me being around that person, you know, uh, it was my spiritual father, Prophet Leon Dupria. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, and me getting around there, what happened to me was DNA happened. Mm-hmm. God reminded me and taught me about the DNA inside of me. Mm -hmm. It was through fatherhood. We call it the law of association. Mm -hmm. Um, And so for me, you know, understanding who I was, I had to look into the word and the word Paul talks about this a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, when I see scriptures, when he calls Timothy a true son, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, uh, and I know a lot of Christians, you'll hear this word. And I know that religion is going to pop up. Mm -hmm. And I know that hurts from your earthly father will pop up. Yeah. You know, but if we can take pride away mm-hmm. and we can take hurts away and look at it from this point, that God may uh, may have a process for you learning yeah. who you are mm-hmm. and he's going to restore your relationship with a natural father, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah, a natural person so that you can really understand who he is yes. as a father to you. That's and that's awesome. and that's a big process that mm-hmm. many Christians they it's not uh, it's not 100 percent mandated by scripture, mm-hmm. but it's preferred by God. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we see it through the scripture. Yet we omit it because mm-hmm. we've had bad earthly father experiences. Mm-hmm. We've had bad spiritual authority experiences. So mm-hmm. now we think we walk this Christian life out by ourselves mm-hmm. and we can figure it out. And when we look into the word, God's going to speak to us directly and mm-hmm. he's going to give us the deep things. Mm-hmm. But his process has always been to shape your character Mm -hmm. through a spiritual father, someone who carries a fathering spirit. Let's take the religion off of it. Mm -hmm. This is someone who can impart. We call it impartation. Mm -hmm. Paul in uh, in 1 Thessalonians, he says this. He says, says, I thought it well. Mm -hmm. I thought it good with my heart to impart to you Mm -hmm. the gospel, but not only the gospel, my very life. Mm -hmm. It takes me back to the book of Ephesians. When God, uh, when uh, when Paul says that God gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, some mm-hmm. to be teachers, mm-hmm. as gifts to man, mm-hmm. meaning He gave us people mm-hmm. whose lives are a gift to us. Amen. And through their lives, it says there that it equips us for the working of ministry mm-hmm. and unto the perfecting. The word perfect means mature. Mm-hmm. And I hope That's no, right. I'm not losing anyone. What I'm saying is God has put people on this earth to mature you. That's all right. You can't know your identity if mm-hmm. you if you abort the maturing process because mm-hmm. you don't want relationship with other people. That's right. So this is the, the key thing that took me from a, a Christian who was nominal, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. carnal, mm-hmm. carnal Christian. Mm-hmm. It took me... When I began to put my trust, yes, mm-hmm. my trust, mm-hmm. I had to trust that God's way was better than my way. Amen. I had to open my heart again. Mm-hmm. I had to, I had to, you know, really trust a physical person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I had to receive spiritual food. 
That's good. And it, it took someone who had a fathering spirit. Not everyone has a fathering spirit, mm-hmm. but you'll know them by their fruit. Mm-hmm. I looked at my spiritual father, Prophet Leon. Mm-hmm. He walked in everything that it really, he inspired me mm-hmm. 100%. Find someone who inspires you, right? who knows God. Look at the fruit of their life. Mm-hmm. Look at what's actually being produced in their life. Yeah. Say to yourself, man, you know, everything that they walk in, that's what I want to walk in. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to do with my life. That's mm-hmm. what I see myself in them. Mm-hmm. That's when you found someone who carries a fathering spirit, a person mm-hmm. who has the ability to take what is produced in their life that's and give great. it to you. Because a lot of times people, will they'll look at the person they were. Mm-hmm. And so you need to be looking at someone, you know. Yes. And we look at the word, but there's like, there needs to be a person An in example. our life, a yep. voice. So mm-hmm. that takes me to this. What does one voice mean to you? Because yep. in my book, One Voice, we talk about how God's voice impacted my life. And now I'm using my voice to impact other others' lives. Yeah. So, um, but I love what you were saying that look for that voice yeah. or that person that you want to be like, because if you don't have, if you don't pursue your healing, you're not going to get healed. Yeah. If you don't pursue your walk with God, you're not going to grow. So yeah. you have to pursue growth. And if you don't pursue something, your past will pursue you. It's always in pursuit of you for you to be that old man. Yeah. So we have to, you know, when we get into the word of God and we're being transformed, we got to we got to hook up with other people. So yeah. tell me a little bit about what one voice means to you. Yeah, well, one voice to me has, has been making sure that there is a voice mm-hmm. that can tell me no when I feel yes. <laughs> That's good. It's a voice that can tell me yes when I feel no. Yeah. It's One voice has always been about submission. Mm-hmm. Submission. When I submit to the one God is placed into my life mm-hmm. to steward my soul. Mm-hmm. Because the scripture says that ministers... They are here mm-hmm. to steward your soul. Meaning, mm-hmm. the, And it even says that they'll give an account before God for mm-hmm. what they did with you, mm-hmm. how they treated you. You don't give an account for them. They give an account for you. Mm-hmm. That means they have a grave responsibility, a very important responsibility that's making sure that you become mature mm-hmm. and you get to where you're going. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, for me, is making sure that I had one voice, mm-hmm. someone who can pour into my life, who mm-hmm. has fruit. Listen, uh, that was the biggest thing. The voice must have fruit behind mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. But one voice is where one person speaks into my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are anointed. Mm-hmm. They know God. They mm-hmm. listen to God. And they also have a voice. Yeah. Never listen to a voice that doesn't have a voice behind them. That's all right. And, and what I mean is, listen, uh, uh, you can only go as far as your father goes. Even That's the Jews right. understood that. That's right. You know, culturally. They mm-hmm. say, who is his father? David yeah. looked at the Goliath and said, who is his father? Right. You know, uh, and... <laughs> The, the father, you can look at the father and know where the son is going mm. because the son will start at the place where the father left off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a beautiful picture that yeah. God, God paints. Yeah. Um, and so we, we, we know more of God through that process. But here, one voice, it mm-hmm. means that someone, there's a voice in my life. Mm-hmm. For me, it's a spiritual father. Um, mm-hmm. That speaks into my life. They can tell me no when I mean yes. Mm-hmm. Can tell me uh, yes when I mean no. Right. One who has the authority in my life to mm-hmm. speak what God is speaking, and I'm going to take it mm-hmm. when I can't hear for myself. One of the biggest responsibilities for a father is mm-hmm. to establish a son. Mm-hmm. What does it mean to establish? To set up the necessary systems within a son, mm-hmm. so that they can get to where they're going. Mm-hmm. Uh, with that word establish, it means there's going to be times, and 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 I'll and. I want to say this is in also after that first Thessalonian verse that I was speaking of. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul says something about uh, to establish you mm-hmm. so that these afflictions may not take you out. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if you have a spiritual father who has fruit in his life, you don't mm-hmm. get what they have. You don't get what they say. You get what they have. Mm-hmm. Look at their life. Mm-hmm. If they don't have deliverance uh, in a sense, they don't move in deliverance, they're not delivering people, then you're not going to get deliverance through them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's no supernatural healing. You're not going to get healing through them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way. You mm-hmm. have, you get what they have, mm-hmm. not what they say. Wow. But check this out. He says, so that you may be established and these afflictions may not take you out. Mm-hmm. Meaning if you have a spiritual father and you're submitted, you're genuinely submitted and you're trusting, mm-hmm. the things that would take you out mm-hmm. before... Mm -hmm. no longer can take you out Mm -hmm. because there's something that happens relationally Mm -hmm. where a covering comes over you where their victories become your victories that's good and so uh one voice 
to me, speaks of having that one voice where mm-hmm. someone's victories become my victories. That's so right. in my lowest point, I can think to the lowest point in my Christian walk, mm-hmm. um, you know, where I, I mean, I was, I was dealing with everything of the old nature, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you, you deal with your mistakes, you deal with, you know, uh, if, although I was delivered from things, there's mindsets mm-hmm. that still needed to come down. Some of those things take years. Yeah. Imagine how God has placed someone here to walk with you for years to help you get your mind right. Yeah, that's right. But if you never submit to anyone and you never have that, I want to speak to all my pastors. If Mm -hmm. you don't have someone, you need to get someone. Mm -hmm. You can only go as far as your father. If you don't have a father or if you don't have a mentor, you don't have someone who you're looking at the fruit and saying, Mm -hmm. that's what I want. If if you know you're called to Mm -hmm. thousands Mm -hmm. and you're not sitting under someone who has thousands, trust me, you won't get thousands. Mm -hmm. There's no way. It's always been God's process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is your character and the anointing that you need, the grace that you need Mm -hmm. to do thousands, that has to be imparted to you. Mm -hmm. It has to be given. It has to be trained in you. It has to be unlocked in you. A father unlocks. Mm -hmm. Father looks at you and says, you know, this is the way you were made. Don't you know the family trade is like this? Mm -hmm. You know? That's good. You know, I I was, uh, my dad, uh, you know, I, I said this with my team, not to go too far into this, but um, my dad was a fantastic uh, athlete, my mom, fantastic athlete. They met in college, they played basketball together. Mm-hmm. And they, there were certain skills that they were known for. Guess what? I got them all. Wow. You know, so my dad was able to look at me and say, no, 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 trust me, do it a little bit this way. Mm-hmm. When I began to do it that way, I found something out about myself that I didn't know. Right. I found a skill I didn't know I had. It's what mm-hmm. fathers do. Yeah. You know, so one voice has always been about listening to that one voice, allowing one voice to speak to me even when I can't hear God. That's right. Listen, when you can't hear God, the 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 measure of the Father in your life mm-hmm. will be the measure you succeed when you can't hear God. That is so good. I, I've always had this mm-hmm. saying to my kids also, show me your friends and the people you're hanging out with, yes. and I'll show you what your future is going to look like. It's true. It's true. You know, and you it's have true. to really be careful who you hang out with. If you hang out with negative people and they're always... Mm-hmm griping and complaining that yep. that's what you're going to become because yep. the word says that bad company corrupts good, character yeah good morals yep. yeah mm-hmm. so we have to be careful of the voices that we're listening yep. to because there are a lot of voices out there that's right so you know when we find the lord or we come um under that umbrella of a believer and you get established in a church it's so important that you get connected and you find yeah. that spiritual father right. that you, can mentor you and, you and submit to him. Yeah, you get that DNA of the church. Yeah, that's right. You know, think mm-hmm. every church has a DNA. Right. Every church has a culture. Mm-hmm. Think about God. You 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 were attracted to a church for a reason. That's right. There's something in you that that said, okay, no, here I feel I'm looking and I'm seeing that this is for me. That's right. You know, well, why would you ever be there for a few days or a few years and mm-hmm. not get the full? The full training there, mm-hmm. the full DNA there. You right. know, why why wouldn't you let that that body, the body of Christ, the different members there, mm-hmm. do their work so that you can get to where you're going? Mm-hmm. You must get the full DNA. That's right. You know, that's your family. That's mm-hmm. the trade there. That's you know, it. Um, and so I, I thank God that you know, in an like you know, by our church, you know, under our, our, my spiritual father and our senior pastor, you know, we get DNA, if, if you will, for lack of better words, mm-hmm. you know, um, there's a culture, there's a something, there's a vision that's yeah. there in the house that, listen, when I don't know my vision, there's a mm-hmm. corporate vision. That's right. And that corporate vision qualifies me for my personal vision. Amen. And that's how God has always done it. But mm-hmm. I think what has happened over the years, uh, uh, is that the body of Christ, we've kind of preached it differently because of hurts because of abuses, you know, we began to make substitutes mm-hmm. for God's process. Mm-hmm. And that's why the power mm-hmm. has been left. There's no deliverance, you know, yes. or there hasn't been deliverance. There hasn't been really, there hasn't mm-hmm. been supernatural healings. Mm-hmm. But when we preach the word in its integrity mm-hmm. and we follow the word, no matter what, mm-hmm. no matter if I'll tell you, you know, uh, you know, maybe this is offending someone. It's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Listen to it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, deal with your offense. <laughs> that's Listen right. to it again. That's Get right. the word in you. This is the word of God. That's you know, right. uh, we can go verse by verse by verse. You know, that's but this right. is good. This is when you get the word in its integrity. Mm-hmm. You get the results of the word. If you mm-hmm. want a seeker friendly word, guess what? You're gonna get a seeker friendly salvation. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be salvation at all. That's right. You're gonna get a seeker friendly deliverance. I don't mm-hmm. want a seeker friendly deliverance. I want the real thing. That's right. You know, um, and so you must preach the word in it and get the word in its integrity. But for me, one voice has always been that. Mm-hmm. It's been God's process and mm-hmm. God's way mm-hmm. and God's will. 
mm-hmm. when it comes to my training and my development. Yeah. I understood that and I and I came to the revelation that I needed someone mm-hmm. to unlock what was in me who yeah. could look at me through the eyes of God and, mm-hmm. and, and really say, this is what God is calling you to do. Yeah. You know, um, because as a child, you don't have the you don't have the knowledge to do it mm-hmm. for yourself. Mm-hmm. And in any Christian who's just become uh, a new believer, mm-hmm. there's no way you'll know. You know, right. and, and even for five, for 10 years, you know, and I, I, I stand by this thing because I, I've right. been there. Mm-hmm. You need individuals in your life mm-hmm. who can speak into your life where they're going to listen. A father, the first thing they're going to work on is your rebellious spirit. Mm. I'm telling you. Like a teenager. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's the first thing. You know, that's why yeah. that's why Paul had to say, I begot you. Yeah. Meaning there was labor pains. Yeah. When it came to dealing with that person, giving mm-hmm. them the gospel and implanting the word in them. There was mm-hmm. labor pains, meaning they he dealt with them That's in right. their ups, their downs, yeah. in their rebellions. Mm-hmm. He dealt with them and he stuck by them. Mm-hmm. And that's how they became mature. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, one voice. That's powerful. Tell me, Kevin, we we talked about this before too. What does the mm-hmm. word yet sir mean to you? Yet sir. Well it's yet sir, it's is a very it's a complicated word, but just for the sake of everyone who's new, yeah, you know, uh, it's about really envisioning your future. Okay, and yet there's a Hebrew word. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, but it's 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 about envisioning. It has a lot to do with a vision, mm-hmm. seeing the ability of the thoughts of God, mm-hmm. seeing your future, and mm-hmm. then bringing it into your now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and uh, it's it's a very powerful word. It's a prophetic word. Yeah. You know, um, when it comes to words that speak of of the future I always listen to God's prophets Mm -hmm. you know I really do because they they specialize in that thing Mm -hmm. you know we have different members of the body Mm -hmm. you know but they they all are one body they all have their different talents their different gifts their different specializations Mm -hmm. I've always said it this way the fivefold ministry is to make you uh, a well-rounded Christian Mm -hmm. they all are specialists Mm -hmm. that make you Mm -hmm. well-rounded you get a little bit of what they all have Mm -hmm. you know Uh, but yet sir Speaking of the thoughts of God, speaking mm-hmm. of the ability to uh, uh, to envision a future and then bring it. And that's just mm-hmm. what it, you know, mm-hmm. uh, what just comes to mind for me with yeah. that word, uh-huh. uh, bringing your future into your now, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and there's a few other prophetic words that go with it. But, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that's just what comes to mind for me. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, in the beginning when God created us in his image, he created us in his yet, sir. Mm-hmm. So that word vision and image means that he carried a picture of your life. He carried you in his heart. So we imagine and we envision and we see with our heart. And we have to see the picture that God has for us. Because the enemy has painted a picture for people that's been abused. Yeah, it's you know, true. He's painted a picture and it's been painful. And yes, it happened to you. And and for so long, the church has kind of just covered it up, or we just haven't talked about it, or maybe we just haven't known how to talk about it. Yeah. And when we begin to talk about it, and I began to share my story with people, people were shocked yeah. because they, they said to me, you don't look anything like a person that went through all this. Yeah. That's because I've been transformed. I've been in the presence of God, and I had another thought I had a new image I had to see myself in a different way and I had to submit myself to a voice a person that was over me in the Lord and someone that I knew that loved me and cared about me and that would not abuse me or misuse me or use me in a wrong way Mm -hmm. for their glory or for their um whatever you know but but they would they would bring out the best inside of me and a lot of people you know in churches or in friendships and in marriages they're attracted to people that bring out the worst in them sure. because yeah. they're dictated by their soul yeah. and their pain and their soul and the things that happen to them and that's where their identity comes from but i love what you're saying because you know yeah we can be a christian but yet be in bondage we can be yeah. in egypt yeah. And the Lord wants to lead you out of Egypt into a promised land that he has for you. But once he gets you in that promised land, yeah. he's got to get Egypt out of your mind it's now. True. It's true. Because we carry that yeah. mentality like, oh, everything was better in Egypt. You yeah. know, Why did you bring us out of here? Yeah, it makes me think of the meditation of your heart. Yeah. What is the meditation of your heart? Is it the dream that God has for you? That's it. You know, uh, one of the most powerful things was, you know, when uh, Prophet Leon began to speak about my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, he spoke 
what was in my life. He spoke about what was happening in my present. And then he got to what God was saying for my future. Mm. The most powerful thing. Yeah. Because he began to say, do you know who you are? Mm. Do you know where you're going? Mm. You do one, you do two, you do three. Mm. Not everyone can, has that ability. I get it. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Um, now God, now Paul says, I pray that all of you prophesy. Yeah. You know, he wants yeah. everyone to be able to know what God is saying That's about right. other people's lives and their future. So you may yeah. encourage them. Exactly. But uh, I know not everyone has mm-hmm. that. But listen. God has that through the word about mm-hmm. where your future is. Mm-hmm. It's time that you begin to envision yourself in the very place of the word. Mm-hmm. When you read the word, do you read the word and say, this is me? Mm-hmm. Do you see yourself ministering to people? Mm-hmm. Do you pick up this new found thing that God is saying, this is who you are? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the scripture says it is a mirror. Mm-hmm. It's a mirror. So, you know, speaking of yet seer, speaking of even Rayon, you mm-hmm. know, being able to dream the dream of God. The thought of God. What is the meditation of your heart? Mm -hmm. For me, I needed, I was um, stubborn. I was in a very, you know, very, very tough place. Mm -hmm. So I needed someone to dream for me and to Mm -hmm. tell me of that dream Mm -hmm. and to consult God for me and to tell me of those things because Mm -hmm. I was still dealing through those those different things. So mm-hmm. when when uh, Prophet Leon said, you know, you'll do one, you'll do two, you do three. Why do you look at yourself this way? You're like this, mm-hmm. you see? And it resonated in my spirit. Mm-hmm. I began to imagine myself doing the very thing that God spoke. Mm-hmm. It's time you begin to dream and you begin to see yourself doing what you know God has called you to do, re- regardless if you're afraid to do it, mm-hmm. regardless if you don't think you can do it. Mm-hmm. No, you need to start dreaming you do- you're doing it. You know, mm. it is the yet ser. It's your ability, yeah. you know, to dream those dreams. And God has a dream for you, mm. you know. And the minute you begin to accept it, you begin to activate mm-hmm. your new creative life. That's crazy. I love it. <laughs> you, you haven't activated it yet, trust yeah. me. Because if you have, you would see that the things that would come off of your life, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the, the mindsets that would fall down, all you have to do is begin to start dreaming. Mm-hmm. Begin to start taking the word as the word of God mm-hmm. spoken. In, in, by inspiration mm-hmm. straight to you mm-hmm. see yourself there you know when prophet leon said don't you know you're called to minister you know i'm like what that's the last thing i want to do what are you, saying? <laughs> you know he says you know i see you with the mic i see you with this the, at this time i mean he had years and dates you know not mm-hmm. everyone's gonna give you years and dates but mm-hmm. i'm telling you when you submit mm-hmm. to a father they're gonna bring out things in you you never mm-hmm. knew that were there so that's you know? when you found out you were called to preach oh then yeah and oh yeah still. you know i always had a sense you know, we always have a sense. Yes. We always know. And then mm-hmm. uh, from from a little bit, you know, we don't mm-hmm. know everything. God always reveals in parts. He mm-hmm. never reveals the full picture. So if you're, let me talk to my analytical people right now. Mm-hmm. My analytical pastors, you think you have the full picture? You don't. Mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. reveals, and we you can see it in the scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's mm-hmm. always a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm just mm-hmm. quoting the scripture, mm-hmm, okay? Mm-hmm. You never get the full picture. You're going to get the next thing to do. Yeah. So just do it. That's crazy. You know, my analytical people, don't look for the whole picture. That's do right. the next thing. What is God dreaming for you? Mm-hmm. Next. Do wow. it. Begin to do that. God will show you more and more picture, more mm-hmm. and more, more and more, until, look, you look up and you're in the very place you were dreaming of mm-hmm. years ago. Listen, every dream I've had, I've accomplished to this day. Mm-hmm. That is no boast in myself. That's yes. boast in God. You know, you, uh, many people, they can say, you're this, you're that. But guess what? Don't hate on me because I achieved the dreams. I love it. And the Lord, <laughs> the word says this too. I will do more than you can think, comprehend, or imagine, imagine or you know? dream, yeah. you know? Yeah. So he says, you dream it and I'll match you and I'll do over it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to encourage, I want to yeah. encourage everyone. Listen, mm-hmm. those dreams, those God given dreams, you can achieve them. You yes. have to begin to see yourself there. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw myself when that word went forth, it was very, you know, it wasn't, you know, something I was like desiring, desiring, you know, do mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. you think I wanted people to call me prophet? No, not at all. Mm-hmm. You think I, I wanted to prophesy and do all those different. No, that wasn't like, you know, I didn't wake up and say, I want to do those things, mm-hmm. but I, those are the things that God had ordained for me to do. Mm-hmm. Those are things that God had placed inside of me. I just never tapped them, tapped into them. Mm-hmm. I never tapped into the new created life at that point. Mm-hmm. When the word went forth and I began to believe the word, mm-hmm. the word of God, the report of the Lord, I began mm-hmm. to, re- to, to believe it. Mm-hmm. And I began to see myself I opened myself up to it mm-hmm. I began to dream and I began to see myself with a microphone mm-hmm. you know I, I remember uh, I'll, I'll share this really quick story mm-hmm. I remember I had a dream that uh, that I was in um, 
lack of better words, I was in an assembly. Mm-hmm. Okay, that to me it looked like an assembly, lots mm-hmm. of people. Okay, and uh, and there was two microphones in the assembly. I remember Prophet Leon was to my was to my right, I was to his left, and I remember him uh, handing me one of the microphones. And then pointing, and I had to walk with the microphone, and it was a suggestion that I was to preach. Mm-hmm. I saw it clear as day, <laughs> wow. and I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. So, so to me, this is this was impossible. God's dream for you is going to seem impossible to you. Mm-hmm. It's going to seem impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, this is impossible. Do you mean I'm going to preach next to Prophet Leon? He's mm-hmm. going to release me to preach at this point in my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was just no possible way at all. Mm-hmm. I wasn't. I mean, I was connected. I was submitted there uh, uh, to Encounter Church, and that was my spiritual father. But like, there's a gap. At like, you, you know, in my mind, there was just no way it can happen. Mm-hmm. Listen, that very year. I got a message and he said, it's time for you to come to South Africa. You know, uh, I would just want you to come spend time here. Clear a month. Just come. Mm-hmm. I, I spent a month in South Africa that year. Wow. I'm, I've gotten made away. I mean, I remember meeting someone. And they said, hey, there's something that God put on your heart. I'm to write a check. You tell me how much. Wow. You know, this is this is how these things work when you mm-hmm. open yourself up yeah. to what God is saying. You know, That's I remember right. going there for a year and uh, for a year uh, for a month. Excuse me. And for a month that year. Mm-hmm. And um, when I got there, I was there for a few weeks. But then something very different happened. We were in service and Prophet had me stand up and he said, he's like, Kevin, I want you to stand up, you know, um, and he's ministering. Mm-hmm. I'm in awe because I'm just watching my spiritual father minister. You know, it's, it's a very very awesome time you know i'm getting so much the word is so heavy the presence of god is so heavy mm-hmm. i've never been in an experience like that you know where i'm i'm there in the service you know it was years before that i was actually in a service there mm-hmm. long story short he says i want you to stand up i want you to watch this he says someone give them a mic give him a mic <laughs> just like your dream yeah <laughs> and he said he said i want you just to uh share you know, mm-hmm. uh, a few things of, you know, even how I met you and, you know, how, how these things, you know, work and how, what's ministry been like, a, a whole bunch of, of things. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm walking up and all of a sudden I began to remember what I'm to do in that moment. Mm-hmm. I remembered cause I'd already been in that moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I dreamt I was the meditation of my heart was the very report of the Lord. That's so good. I dreamed the whole thing. So I had 100% boldness and confidence at that moment because I already knew what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. I knew how I was going to walk. I walked to the left. You know, I, I, there were certain things that I was walking in my future right then and there Yeah. because I'd already been there. Mm-hmm. Listen, we have to open ourselves up to the word of God. That's right. You have to begin to start dreaming where you're going. That's Don't right. let anyone hinder that dream. Don't let the enemy negative thoughts. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Get around someone who inspires your dream. Mm-hmm. Get around someone who can bring it out of you mm-hmm. and who can tell you, hey, look, I know you had a bad day, but guess what? Mm-hmm. You're called to one, two, three, and that bad day mm-hmm. does not dictate where you're going. Trust me. Everyone right. has a bad day. You, get, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and so that was a very powerful moment. You know, when it comes to the meditation of my heart, Mm -hmm. you know, seeing where I was going and then realizing I'm walking in the very Mm -hmm. thing I dreamt. Yes. The very thing. And, you know, um, we all have a voice that is speaking into our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, it could be a healthy voice or an unhealthy one. Yeah. So we need to uh, evaluate that as believers, as Christians, which voices are you listening to? And to come in agreement with God's voice yeah. and with the people that's in alignment with his voice yeah. over your life. And when you do that, you know, I just feel like somebody out there has lost a dream because they have experienced so much loss during this pandemic in the year of 2020. And maybe they're discouraged right now. And they have a past. They had an old lifestyle or they've been abused yeah. and or they've come out of an abusive situation And God's called them out of it, but they're just discouraged because it seems like everything has just come to a halt right now. And I want you to imagine that person that they're they're listening and um, they're needing a word from the Lord today to dream again 
and to um, put the past behind them and to embrace what God has for them. Do you have a word over that person that may be listening that they've lost their dream and it's 2020 and the pandemic and there's been so much loss. So how can they get their their dreams back and and embrace the identity that God has for them and go into their destiny, their God-given destiny that that the Lord has written especially for them, you know? Yeah, yeah uh, most definitely. You know, even as you were speaking, I just was reminded how God is faithful, mm-hmm. 100%. Mm-hmm. In my life, God has never let me down. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. People have let me down. Family have let me down. Friends, they've let me down. Mm-hmm. My car has let me down. Mm-hmm. God has never, ever, ever dropped the ball. Mm-hmm. Ever. It's a lie from the pit of hell mm-hmm. when a person thinks that God will let them down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. God doesn't let people down. Mm-hmm. So starting just with what I'm going to say now, agree with me. God's never going to let you down. You yeah. may have felt like you've lost your dreams. You may have felt like you lost mm-hmm. your purpose or you have lost your way. Mm-hmm. You feel like you've lost it, but God didn't lose it. Mm-hmm. He knows where you are. He's been mm-hmm. with you. You know, it's the scripture says, though you make your bed in hell, yeah, I am I'm there. there. Mm-hmm. So you're not going anywhere without the Lord. Trust me. That's He's been right. with you. That's you right. know, uh, so in this moment right now, mm-hmm. understand that he's faithful. Mm-hmm. It's time for you to open yourself back up. Mm-hmm. It's time for you to get connected to a local church. Mm-hmm. It's time for you to start trusting again. That's right. God's always been willing. Now it's time for you to be willing. Mm-hmm. God's always said, I'm here. Mm -hmm. It's yes and amen. Amen. You know, you're saying you want your dream. God's Mm -hmm. saying yes and amen. Mm -hmm. He's not condemning you for anything you did. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You have to be willing to receive. That's good. You have to be willing to start. Mm -hmm. Just start. It's time for you to get in uh, into the local church again. It's time for you to start trusting Mm -hmm. someone to steward your life again. Mm -hmm. That is how it starts. And I know God is 100% faithful. Mm -hmm. You may have had... uh, uh, Abuse. You mm-hmm. may have had individuals abuse their authority, but guess what? God saw it all. Mm-hmm. He's made provision for all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and and what I'm saying is, even the next person that comes into your life, uh, an, an authority figure, they're not going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. But what God is faithful in is making sure that you're shaped, mm-hmm. making sure that you get to the desired result. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm going to tell you this: go for fruit. Mm-hmm. Who around your life? For me, listen. Uh, Prophet Leon came into town uh, and I had an encounter with God, but then he left town. But there's no distance in the spirit. Mm-hmm. I began to listen to his podcast. Mm-hmm. I began to listen to his, his YouTube. That's I right. began to spend Sunday service listening to him. Mm-hmm. And through those podcasts, I began to study the word that God gave him. Yeah. And I that word began to come alive for me. Mm-hmm. The same things that were happening with him began to happen for me. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you. It's time for you to open yourself back up. It's time for you to really be committed Mm -hmm. to a voice that can that can encourage you and that can bring out your God given destiny within you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's time for you to start listening to some things. It's time for you to put some work and invest in yourself Mm -hmm. because the thing that God will do what only he can do. Mm -hmm. But he's requiring you to do what only you can do. Yeah. He's not going to supersede your will. It's time for you to start living again and tap into the abundant life. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope you have enjoyed this this broadcast yes, yes, of an One honor. Voice. And if you haven't heard episode one or two, you need to go back and listen to that because it's very, very powerful. And today we talked about um, what One Voice means to you and how you the deliverance led you to destiny. Yeah. And getting into your destiny you have to have a voice speaking into your life and it has to be the right voice because there's a lot of voices out there so be careful who you submit yourself to and and who you hang out with and like i've told my boys before you're guilty by association you may not be doing anything at that party oh yeah but if the police comes you're all going to jail okay and i think (laughs) i think we didn't we i may i may have not i may have neglected to say this at the beginning Mm -hmm. but listen deliverance breaks a chain yes what you do after your deliverance is up to you that's good once the chain is broken Mm -hmm. it's time for you to explore your freedom that's right you know and you have the freedom to do it you have to explore it exactly yeah exactly 
And I love the word that you used a while ago. You said you have to activate it. Mm -hmm. And when I get a new cell phone, it's no use to me at all until I activate it. It'll be in your pocket. <laughs> it'll be a black screen, you yeah. know, and you can't check messages. And think about this. And some people just know how to activate their phone. I don't yeah. even know how to activate my phone, so I need help. I need yeah. a voice mm -hmm. speaking into my life That's to help true. me activate that phone. Yeah. So, you know, you may be out there and you're like, hey, I'm a natural leader. I know how to activate this. I'm going to mm -hmm. go for it. And then some of you are like me. You're like, I just need help. I need yeah. somebody to help me activate this phone. And so find that voice and find that person that inspires you and, and know that God um, will do exceedingly above what you can think, comprehend, or imagine. Amen. And he has a promise for you that he will yeah. take what the enemy meant for harm and Come he on. will turn it around for your good. Every time. And he will make the devil regret the day he ever laid hands upon you Come on. because of what you are now. Yeah. So we thank you so much for listening to this podcast. We hope you join us next week. And Kevin, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Um, they We have an office phone. We have email. You know, you can Google Encounter Church Statesboro. Okay. Uh, if you want to send an email, Emails, you can send it send your emails into email at encounterchurchstatesboro.com mm -hmm. or our office phone which is 912-515-4395 <laughs> 4395 <laughs> good <laughs> I have to remember that one yes. you know, I don't call the, the yeah, office I know. phone like you know? I never call my own phone number that's, that's crazy <laughs> I know and I love it that's awesome. Uh, so um, I love it that we're both here in Statesboro. We both yeah. have churches here, but we're brothers and sisters in Christ. And yeah. listen, we're supposed to fill up all of our churches. Oh, yeah. And that's what God wants. So I'm just so inspired by your story and so inspired by what you're doing among your people. Wow. And um, I'm inspired that you came here and we can still work together and do oh, yeah. the things that Jesus did and yeah. and help people and bring healing to their lives. So oh, yeah. I'm super excited about this. I, I can't wait to see what else God has for you. And, mm. and maybe he'll come back and join us again in the future sometimes. You <laughs> never know. <laughs> All Listen, right. We're always here. <laughs> That's right. See you guys later. Thank you for listening to One Voice Makes a Difference. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing and reviewing the show on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Tell your friends about One Voice too. Your voice helps the show reach more people to spread the gospel. Together with all of our voices, we can come out of the darkness and into the light. If you'd like to hear more about Janet's personal story, you can purchase her book, One Voice, on her website, janetswanson.org. You can also connect with her on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Most importantly, if you are in crisis, please call the 24-7 Crisis Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Don't wait. Your life matters.